Okay, so the context of the work is uh, building shared models uh, of multiple agents. So the context is some agents have uh, data and they want to build a shared model, everyone together. And uh, this is something that is becoming very interesting, uh, both in blockchain platforms, uh, in uh, cloud services, and there are also government initiatives that are looking into it, because it seems to increase welfare if you can build models on uh, aggregate data instead of uh, separate data. So a simple use case for that, uh, just to give an uh, intuition of what uh, we're talking about, is you would have uh, two firms, and in their website, uh, they are real estate uh, firms, and they want to uh, offer in the website some estimation of uh, house prices in some area. And uh, the way they would do that is each of them has some historical uh, data points. Uh, and they can fit maybe a, a regression, linear regression model uh, to see the size of the house against uh, the price. And uh, they can do it separately, each on their own uh, data points. Or they can share it with some third party or central uh, uh, authority and build the uh, regression model based on all the data together. Um, okay, so where is the problem? Where is the strategic aspect that we're looking into? Um, so first of all, we, we observed that in reality, there are many reports that firms are not sharing data as much as you would expect them or as much as could be uh, mutually beneficial. And why is that? So our uh, formalization is that they fear or they might also abuse uh, using exclusivity attack. So exclusivity attack means that uh, in a good uh, situation, everyone will just share the true data and we will build the true model and everyone will get the true model. But uh, if you are able somehow to send different data than the true data, and uh, uh, then the model would probably be different than the real model, but you have a way to reverse it and see what would have been the true model have you shared uh, true data. Uh, so if you're able to do that, you prefer this over uh, just sharing the true data. Um, okay, so, so let's, for, let's uh, state the question that we're asking basically. Uh, given a communication protocol, which, we, which I will uh, shortly present, uh, and that some learning algorithm, it can be linear regression, it can be uh, just very simple algorithms, we will see examples. Um, where all agents uh, report truthfully. So we assume all the other agents beside the attacker are reporting truthfully and accept the model. So part of being truthful means you also accept whatever the central authority uh, estimates as the model. Um, can an attacker deviate with an exclusivity attack? And what we find, uh, we examine uh, a few protocols, but uh, here are two are shown. And we, sh we basically see that uh, under one protocol that we present, that we call the continuous protocol, um, uh, there is basically vulnerability and even some kind of strong vulnerability that I will later define. Um, but actually, for a different protocol that we define, the periodic protocol, um, these algorithms are not vulnerable. So actually, a main, a very important takeaway from the paper is that the decision over which communication protocol is uh, facilitated to communicate is very important for the uh, vulnerability here. Uh, okay, so this was maybe vague. I don't know how uh, concrete you, you, it was, uh, how clear it was. So, so let's see a very simple example in a one-shot case. So this one-shot case is like two firms have data. They share it one time they get a computation result, and that's it. That's like one-time communication. So agent one has a number 10, agent two has number 20. If they share it together, it's 30 together. But agent one has a very simple deviation, given that we fixed that agent two is uh, truthful and accepts the result of the model. It sends some 10 plus delta. Um, it's, very, it's very easy to reverse it. You just uh, subtract uh, delta from the end result, and it managed to make the other agents think the result is 30 plus delta, but uh, by itself it knows that it's uh, 30. Okay, so, um, so, but this doesn't always work. Um, it really depends on the algorithm. So let's see where it fails, uh, or at least some attack fails. So 
In this case, they have the same numbers, but they want to compute the maximum of uh, these numbers. And the maximum is obviously 20. Um, now let's see some attack by agent one. So agent one sends 25. So this attack manages to mislead the other agent. The reported computational result would be 25. Uh, but now agent one is confused because as in this case, we know, we as the all-knowing uh, audience know that actually the result should be 20. But uh, by agent one uh, information set or what agent one knows, it only knows that uh, it had uh, 20 and the result was 25, but maybe the other agent has like 22 or 23, and then the maximum should be 23. So it cannot really know, infer uh, precisely what is the true result of the computation. Okay, so this was one shot, and one shot was considered in the past. Um, we consider long-term communication. So what we're saying is, uh, for example, the real estate firms, they don't calculate only once the prices of the uh, price estimation. They do it regularly uh, uh, every some time or co even continuously. So, um, so this changes the pictures, the picture a bit, even intuitively before we get into like uh, uh, formal uh, thinking. Um, f one thing that it changes is that now if we have continuous com uh, communication, you might be able to send data points and get an estimation every time of the model. And maybe you do this and you use it to query more and more, that more, and more information out of this uh, model. So you get more and more information, so it's stronger ability than uh, only one. And you could ask, okay, so why not uh, prohibit someone from, ask, from uh, querying more than once uh, in a row, uh, one after the other? So the answer could be that um, uh, basically Sybil attack, like uh, if you uh, form multiple identities, you would be able to do it and there is no real way to uh, limit you from doing it, especially in an online or uh, decentralized uh, case. Um, okay, the benefit of a long-term uh, cooperation or communication model is that you cannot, um, you don't want to ruin this uh, uh, communication. So uh, if, if you make some, for example, one attack you could do is you send the true data, then after the true data you send some garbage data, and now everyone, you got the true uh, uh, result, everyone else got a bad result. Uh, but you, the reason you wouldn't do it maybe is because you still want to keep updating with new data you have, and once you uh, already sent this garbage data, you don't know what's going on. Uh, in the mechanism. So this is something that is kind of prohibiting attacks. Um, so let's just say quickly that the way we formalize it is as some uh, 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 distri distributed model where we have uh, uh, nature. Nature represents reality, like the real data points that uh, agents get. Uh, they learn it from the users or whatever. Uh, the agents are the strategic agents that, uh, um, that uh, want to update. And they, they don't have to even have anything corresponding with what nature updates them. They can go on their own, update something with the center authority. Um, they can uh, react or they can update, nature updates them with some data points. They update with different data points. So they, they are free to do whatever they want basically. But if they are truthful, it means the truthful behavior here is every time you get an update from nature, you send the same update to the central authority. Uh, that would be a truthful behavior. Um, okay, so here I really hope you can see this, uh, the graph over there. Um, so I, I would go over it quickly. Um, this is just an example where uh, we are running the protocol for the um, algorithm of max, for max computation. And uh, uh, what happens here is nature sends the number 90 to agent two. Uh, agent two is truthful, so it sends the number 90 to the ledger, the center, the central authority. And immediately the central authority updates both agents with the number 90, which is the current max. Um, now, Agent one decides to attack in some way and sends the number X uh, to the central authority. 
uh, x is, we assume in this example that x is larger than 90. Um, so the new max is x and it's updated by the center uh, to everyone. Um, so for now it looks like a successful attack on behalf of agent one, but the problem is there is a protocol run that now the next thing that nature does is sends y, which is between 90 and x. And, um, and this y uh, is sent to agent two, sent to the central authority, and uh, now the central authority updates everyone with x, because x is still the maximum. It doesn't update everyone with y, only with x, because x is the maximum. So again, like similar to the one-shot case, agent one doesn't know um, uh, what is y, because y should have been the true result of the max computation, okay? Um, right, so what we kind of, this example wanted to demonstrate is uh, each agent can only observe what nature sends to it, uh, what it updated the center, and what uh, the center shared with it as the model outputs or estimations. Uh, this is the, what every agent observes. And um, how we define vulnerability is, um, okay, so, so maybe the most important uh, characteristic is that for every, uh, uh, every time the truth is different, we are able to uh, see the difference, maybe in a different way, but we are able to infer the difference uh, in the um, t uh, distorted uh, uh, setting. And, and also the, the other condition is, is that we, there is at least one protocol run, one case, uh, where we are able to mislead the others. And the strong vulnerability is if actually for every uh, uh, protocol run we're able to mislead the others, okay. Um, so let's see how this applies to linear regression. So linear regression, there is a, it's an optimization problem and we have an, al uh, an algorithm and a formula to do it. Um, so the main challenge in uh, linear regression would be how to reverse the effects of fake points that you submit. So let's say you wanted to attack, you wanted to mislead others, you would submit maybe some uh, wrong points, but then later when more updates come, you want to somehow reverse it to know what's going on. So, okay, so, because, okay, so uh, how do we do it? So actually, to show vulnerability, uh, the premise of the question is a bit wrong because uh, the question assumes that to mislead the others, you would submit extra fake points. But actually, what you can also do is uh, omission. We call it an omission attack. Uh, you can omit some points that you have and complete them later. So this is like a sneak attack. What do we mean by that? Um, let's assume that the underlying data is uh, the blue points. It's not visible to the agent, but what is visible is the blue line. Um, and now exactly the red points come as a nature update to, uh, to the agent. And the line that would fit these uh, red points are exactly, is exactly the same uh, blue line. Um, so now actually the agent, even without sending any update, already knows that the result of uh, the uh, union of the points is going to be uh, the new line, the, the same line. Because if you have a linear regression over two sets and the estimation is the same, then also the estimation over the union is the same. So actually, it doesn't need to actually update to know what is uh, going to be the true model. And then what it can do is omit some of the points this would make the model different for the others. And, um, uh, and then later, the problem might come up later when other agents update or itself update, uh, but then it can complete the missing points. So this is enough to show vulnerability. The reason that maybe it's not such a strong uh, result is that maybe the chance that this would exactly happen, like you would have two lines that are exactly the same, is uh, low if you assume some uh, probability distribution. So we show a stronger form of attack um, where uh, the agent, where the agent uh, basically keeps querying, uh, it, it just totally ignores what should be the true uh, uh, estimation and uh, uh, keep updating with multiple queries and every time learns 
use these uh, queries to learn uh, something about the uh, true estimator. So basically what we show is that it's enough to send enough and also required to send about the dimension of the linear regression problem, the number of features. So if you do that, you're able to infer uh, the gram metrics there and then um, and you have to do it in some way that uh, uh, neutralizes uh, problems that can come up with uh, linear dependence. Uh, and if you do that, then you're able to uh, uh, always use these uh, subsequent queries to infer what is the underlying model and also mislead the others. Um, right. Uh, so these are some examples that uh, it runs. Okay, and quickly I will just touch up on the periodic communication model. So the difference from the continuous model is that instead of agent agents uh, updating at will, as we assumed in the continuous model, in the periodic model there are like some uh, fixed uh, periods or it's initiated by the center. It's not that they come to the center. It's the center asks everyone at the same time for their inputs. And um, this really changes the strategic uh, results here. And basically, we can show that linear regression is not vulnerable, and uh, also the other protocols, uh, the other algorithm. Um, right. So this, and also another important thing is, it might have very interesting uh, implications for federated learning, because uh, in federated learning, you do the uh, computation of the the computation in the nodes, and then you aggregate the results. So some uh, parameter, uh, uh, some dis uh, like maybe minor decisions for the uh, federated learning can, uh, in fact, uh, very affect this uh, uh, strategic uh, aspect. Um, okay, great. So, thank you. Right. Okay, okay, okay. So that's uh, very nice. There is something called like the exit scam. I don't know if you know it. It's like an internet term. It means that uh, sellers usually, if uh, it's the le they have some reputation online, and if the, it's the last uh, time they interact with the buyer, they might not actually send the item because they know it's the last time. So yeah, it, it matters very much if it's the last time. In our protocols, we assume that uh, it's infinite, like the protocol runs can be of infinite length. So every, it, it never happens like the finite. But uh, it's interesting to study the finite case. I'm pretty sure it will show uh, a lot of vulnerabilities that don't happen in the, uh, this. But also, your question already, already implies that if you add some stochastic city over where you are, which we don't have here, but uh, this can uh, help. And also, it probably can help to the continuous model where th thinking about that, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. <laughs> okay. Do you have any examples of the actual real world uh, data hiding, data distorting uh, happening? Like um, right. Uh, yeah, so at least for federated learning, it, it is considered like um, uh, why would I, if, if I can update uh, the model on my machine, why would I update and send it to everyone to aggregate? Or maybe I can get the model that everyone implemented and then do the uh, gradient descent later and only have the improved model for myself. So I don't know if it happened in the wild, but it's like mentioned before this type of attack uh, is possible. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> 